look, I'm just one person. My voice combined with others makes it that much stronger. Um, and so I've decided that I will, in fact, continue to dedicate myself, um, despite everything that's happened, despite, uh, despite the ordeal that I went through, uh, that I will continue uh, to speak up and speak out. And it's that much stronger and that much more powerful when it's done in concert with others, uh, both directly and indirectly. And so if there's a platform that allows for this to uh, occur in a way that is much more sustainable, uh, allows basically a persistence. Now I use a technical term, but you know, the persistence. So not just a one-off where you organize for a single event or you organize or resist for, for something in opposite, basically in reaction to the government. I would actually prefer to see this as a proactive platform that allows for the continuance of, of in, in a virtual, especially in a virtual space, but also having impact on the, re, on the real space of, of where we live in our, in our lives here on, on this third rock from the sun, uh, then um, that becomes necessary uh, for, for not just organizing, but also remaining connected. And whether people stay or not, that the platform itself endures, that the platform itself becomes something that's living and it's, it comes directly from the highest aspirations of who we are, uh, living life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those extraordinary words from the, our own, you know, my own country's uh, Declaration of Independence. For the very few people that I trust, and that's that is sort of there's, there's a real there's still this continuing challenge of trust. You know, how do you establish a trust-based relationship? Uh, not easy, not easy at all. Um, motivations, intentionality on the part of people and organizations. Uh, but I I think for those that I am aware of, uh, including Barrett Brown and the ordeal that he went through, as well as myself and others, and even others uh, before me. And, you know, I've had long, long talks with, with Daniel Ellsberg. And in fact, I formally interviewed him for the Library of Congress's um, Veterans History Project as part of my 240 hours of community service, as well as a number of other veterans from World War II to the present day. Um, he's, he's spoken at length to me privately and then on, on the videotape, as it were, uh, regarding uh, these challenges. Um, and this this becomes you know it becomes sort of if 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 necessity is the mother of invention to coin another phrase that is often used right there's something we need to make create help better society if necessity is the mother of invention you know we have a real necessity here and the tools we have i'm i i do have the confidence that there are enough people and that appears to be the case with pursuance we're willing to take a, a stand and take the steps necessary to build, real, realizing this is an iterative thing, it doesn't happen all at once, to build the kind of platform that can actually sustain itself uh, and survive and thrive in this you know, age of surveillance and still, uh, still allow for what is crucial in terms of organizing, communicating and taking the necessary action against the assault, literally the assaults on our own individual freedom and liberty.